If you hate this coaster, you suck. <laughs> oh, wow! I'm gonna rank every coaster and give them a review. Every drop and every hill, every launch and every loop. Rate it one to ten and then we'll do it all again. Gonna rank and review every coaster. What's going on everybody? My name is Mario. This is a channel all about amusement park type stuff, but mostly coasters. And today in my never ending review, review, this review is just never going to end. And today in my never ending journey to rank and review every single coaster I have ever been on, we're going to be talking about Goliath at Six Flags Magic Mountain and Titan at Six Flags Over Texas. But before we do that, I just want to say thank you to anybody that has subscribed to this channel. You guys are awesome. And to anybody not subscribed to this channel, you better subscribe or I will eat your face off. But without any further ado, let's review. Now these coasters are near identical clones, with the main difference being an added double helix on Titan, and a couple of small statistical differences. Speaking of which, let's talk about the stats for each of these coasters. For Goliath, we have a height of 235 feet, which does classify Goliath as a hyper coaster or a coaster over 200 feet. Goliath has a top speed of 85 miles per hour, a track length of 4,500 feet, and a ride duration of about one minute. Titan stands a little bit taller at 245 feet, although the drop is the same size as Goliath at 255 feet for each of them. The entirety of Titan just stands a little bit higher off of the ground, thus having a higher max height. Titan has the same speed of 85 miles per hour, but a slightly longer track length of 5,312 feet. This is due to that double helix that I mentioned earlier, which also contributes to a longer ride time of about one minute and six seconds. Now, both of these rides have decent stats, but that doesn't stop the ride from getting somewhat of a bad rap. Now, if you're a coaster enthusiast, you are either aware of or responsible for the unnecessary hate that Goliath gets. And if you're not a coaster enthusiast, first of all, congratulations, you don't wanna be one of us. You probably either think Goliath is good or would think it was good if you did write it. And personally, I do not tolerate Goliath slander. The main points against Goliath are that it has no airtime and that it isn't as good as other hyper coasters. In my opinion, these are both stupid arguments. One, because you do not need copious amounts of airtime to have a good ride experience. And two, while it may not be as good as other hyper coasters, it is more unique and does offer more variety than other hyper coasters. And I'll get into why just a little bit later in the video. But as far as perception for Titan goes, the general public likes it and roller coaster enthusiasts think that it is slightly better than Goliath anyway, so it doesn't really get the same level of hate that Goliath does. Anyway, enough jibber jabber, let's talk about the ride experience starting off ride. Both coasters impose over their respective parking lot and make a good first impression on guests entering the park. Both sport a faded orange and green color scheme that, now that I think about it, honestly doesn't really look that good, but I am fond of it just for the sentimental value of Goliath being one of the first really big coasters that I've ever been on. Neither has particularly good theming. However, Goliath does have one of the coolest entrance signs in the world with those massive letters spelling out Goliath as you enter the main queue. But once you get through that queue, your on-ride experience is about to begin. You'll load into very long 30-person trains that have only a lap bar and a seat belt. These are pretty comfy seats, but they are not as open as many newer roller coaster trains are. Aside from that, the only actual downside to these vehicles is that in the second and third row of each each car, you do have a very tall headrest in front of you, limiting views as well as wind blowing in your face, which does slightly impact the ride experience negatively. Once you're all loaded up and ready to go, you're going to pull out of the station, make a right hand turn, and slowly head up your 200 and whatever foot tall lift hill. The chain speed slows down considerably once you get to the top of the lift. 
causing many first-time riders to think the ride is actually breaking down, which if this is your first time riding will add some extra excitement, but if you've been on this ride before, it's kind of just funny to laugh at the people that are freaking out. After you crest the top of the lift hill, you head down what is unfortunately a very underwhelming drop, but it is not without its merits. While a majority of the train will experience little to no airtime at all, if you're in the back row, you will get some very good sustained floater airtime down the entire drop. And though this drop is not steep, that does allow the drop to be very, very long. And while the drop itself may be slightly unimpressive, what follows is not. On both coasters, you get a fantastic hand chopper as you head into a massive tunnel, which gives an interesting effect, and that is a very distinct temperature difference. Both of these coasters reside in locations that are very hot majority of the year. You go into that tunnel and it is freezing cold on some days, and then you pull back out into the sun. It might not be the most amazing thing in the world, but it is certainly unique. Rising up out of that tunnel, you hit a 180 degree turnaround that is very high off the ground, so it does slow your speed down quite a bit, and this is honestly probably the most underwhelming part of the ride. But luckily coming out of that, you hit one of the best elements on the ride, and arguably one of the best floater airtime hills in the world. This incredibly high speed airtime hill is not very high off the ground, so you are flying as you traverse it, and aside from it being fast paced, it is incredibly long. I mean, just looking at it from Google Maps, it measures to about 320 feet from the beginning of the airtime hill to the end of it. You get strong, sustained floater airtime for a good two to three seconds. So even if the only thing about coasters that you like is the airtime, it's still worth a ride just for this hill alone. Now after that airtime hill, this is the only part of the layout where these two coasters differ. For Goliath, you immediately hit an upward banking turn that goes straight into the mid-course brake run, whereas Titan goes into an upward helix that twists you around I believe 540 degrees, but math was never my strong suit. This helix is incredibly powerful, providing good positive g-forces, great hand choppers overhead, and overall a really good sense of speed. This extra element is sorely missed on Goliath. The similarities resume with the mid-course brake run because both coasters hit it very forcefully. But if you are aware of the mid-course brake run, you can brace yourself and not end up in too much pain. These brakes will slow you down to a crawl almost every single time, which definitely does negatively impact the pacing of this ride. As you slowly inch out of the mid-course brake run, if you are sitting in one of the front rows, you will lean out the side of the car, looking at the ground straight down, and the back row doesn't really do much of anything. After you drop out to the left, you'll turn to your right and head into the very intense, very enjoyable spaghetti bowl section of each coaster. This is a series of high-speed helixes that provide some of the the most intense positive g-forces on any coaster out there. And this is where I feel Goliath makes up for its lack of airtime. While I do think most hyper coasters are better than Titan and Goliath, I can't help but appreciate the fact that these coasters decided to do something different, and what they decided to do, they did it well. So after you almost definitely gray out, possibly even black out in those helixes, you are going to slam into the final brakes, and these are the same as the mid-course brake run. They will punch your gut if you aren't ready for it, so just make sure that you brace after that final turn. So, what would I rate these two coasters? On top of providing a large-scale, high-speed ride experience, these two coasters provide some of the most intense, sustained positive g-forces out there. Additionally, the ride experience is very smooth and comfortable all the way through, as long as you're bracing for those brakes. All that being said, it's hard to give these rides anything less than an 8 out of 10. No, they aren't the best coasters in the world, but they are great fun. Out of the 229 coasters that I have currently been on as of making this video, Goliath sits at number 49, and Titan sits at 42. The reasoning behind which is pretty simple. Titan has more elements, so I put it a little higher on my list. I'd love to know what you guys think of these two coasters, even if you don't like them. So go ahead and let me know in the comments down below. Thank you guys so much for watching. Make sure to give the video a thumbs up if you liked it. Go ahead and subscribe and turn on notifications for more content like this. And make sure to tune in next time where I'll be talking about whatever this wheel lands on.